why my going there and, and, and jump in and innovate something like the humble assessment, what's actually wrong with the current method and, and the process as well? Yeah, it's a great question. Thanks, Holly. Um, like what we learned was that um, organisations using question-based assessments or, or um, uh, questionnaires, as it's sometimes referred to as, uh, as Louis was describing a minute ago, have, have, have an effective use where you're looking to send something out and get some responses back. Uh, but they're not particularly effective when you're looking to collaborate uh, much more closely with the person that you're working with and define parameters or ways of thinking about uh, your response in a pretty dynamic way. So for lots of reasons, for those reasons, people end up in the past typically using spreadsheets. And spreadsheets are great, as we know, for people capturing information in a pretty fluid, fluid manner. But what they're not good for is then managing the traceability or remediation thereafter. And so what we're trying to do is get the, the, the flexibility uh, of a spreadsheet and incorporate that into our system. Uh, and we've done that with the requirements-based assessment that, that Louis spoke about a minute ago. Yeah, Anthony, how many people do you think are still working on that model, that old model, using spreadsheets and things like that? What kind of percentage yeah. do you think of businesses are, and firms are still, I, are still using that? Yeah, look, it's, I mean, 99% of, of people out there in the world of risk and compliance are still heavily wedded to the use of spreadsheets. Uh, they do that for a couple of reasons in, in our view. Uh, one is that the software out there that's been available until now has been pretty kludgy stuff. It's been expensive. It's been complex to implement. Um, and there hasn't been an alternative. And ultimately, spreadsheets give people a sense of comfort that they can use them easily and get started and, and sort of try and structure the information that they need to deal with. Uh, but we're looking to obviously change all of that and um, you know introduce a new paradigm and a, and a better way for risk and compliance mm. uh, professionals to operate. So Louis, can you just give us a rundown of what kinds of assessments RBA or requirements-based assessments can actually be used for? Sure. So Ant's covered quite a lot of it there, but um, what we're looking to do is, or what we look to do is create a sort of flow where you can assess directly against your co compliance requirements and your obligations. Um, this is great for running an audit or internal audit or a maturity assessment, as Ant mentioned before. Um, what we're effectively trying to do here is replace the need for giant spreadsheets, where you have your requirements on the right, on the right hand side, on the left hand side, sorry, and in a series of cells where you have to capture data against those requirements. Um, so a number of good use cases for that is when you're, when you're creating a statement of applicability for uh, your ISO 27001 certification or for the ISM. Um, other, uh, other, other types of assessments is when you're looking to run a control assessment to understand the, their design effectiveness, effectiveness and operating effectiveness. effectiveness. Um, so yeah, there's some other good use cases for RBA. A big focus for us as well when designing this um, new sort of, this new flow was around helping um, consultants and advisors run these types of assessments during a client engagement. Um, so they're the types of assessments where it's good for. What it's not good for is running supplier assessments and that's when we use our question-based assessment flow. So there you can actually create the questions, send them off to your supply chain or your vendors um, and effectively Six Click supports all these types of assessments and the flow dictates what type of assessment you're going to run.